For many millions of years, Mars has been silent. The volcanically active past of the red planet is thought to have been left, well, in the past, until now. Last week, on the 27th of October, a paper was published that suggested magma was likely to be present beneath the planet's surface. There must be some sort of hot body or magma chamber, so active volcanism, in this specific area of Mars, says team member Anna Mittelholtz at Harvard University. In this video, we're going to discuss what led to these findings, what they mean, and what other secrets our beloved Mars has been keeping from us. Hello, welcome to Brain Noises. I'm Chloe, science communicator and recovering physicist. And on this channel, we talk about the thoughts that pass through my mind, generally relating to science, but I cannot make any promises. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, then please subscribe. I am very happy that you're here and thanks for joining. Five planets are visible to the naked eye from Earth, and yet Mars stands out for its very bright color and dramatic changes in brightness. Maybe this is why Mars has always intrigued us, whether it be the celestial embodiment of Greek gods, the subject of horror films and stories, or as a possible future home for mankind. In the late 19th century, telescopes were just starting to make out the planet's surface features, and people were getting excited, and in some places, a little too imaginative. In this flurry of excitement, difficult to decipher landmarks imaged by the telescopes turned into straight lines in our minds, leading some to believe that Mars was a dying planet, with its inhabitants digging canals in a desperate attempt to irrigate the deserts and provide water. Back then, Martian life, that is, life on Mars, was actually pretty widely accepted as something that just was. In 1891, a prize of 100,000 francs was established to be awarded to the first person to communicate with extraterrestrials. The belief in the existence of Martians was so strong that they were excluded from consideration on the grounds that talking to them would be too easy. I found this so wild because it showed just how strong that assumption was that there was life on Mars. The canals were pretty thoroughly debunked in the early 20th century, but they continue to be prevalent in science fiction for many decades after. Now, many of us look back on these stories of canals and irrigation systems on Mars with smug smiles on our faces. It's very easy to forget that the pedestal we put Mars on still exists. Just look at Elon Musk trying to colonize Mars. I feel like this goes to show that though we've come very far in our understanding of Mars, much of the planet still remains a mystery. And a pretty exciting one at that, Mars seems like an exaggerated version of Earth, with taller volcanoes, deeper canyons, colder deserts, larger dust storms. To quote Stuart Clark, the author of this great article I read about the history of Mars and our fascination with it, everything about Mars spells adventure, and that is irresistible to us. And so, to the emerging discussion of volcanism on Mars, and more specifically, magma, where do these claims come from? On the 26th of November 2018, NASA's InSights landed on Mars. With its three primary instruments, the lander has been taking the first ever in-depth look at the inside of the planet. Specifically, the data has been helping us understand a number of things. Determine the size, composition, and state of the core of the planet. Analyze the thickness and structure of the crust. Determine the structure of the mantle. Investigate the thermal state of the interior. Measure the rate of internal seismic activity. And measure the rate of meteorite impacts on the red planet. And then two secondary instruments study the external environment and measure the rotational variations of the planet. This very rich and thorough data will help us learn more not just about the evolution of Mars, but all the terrestrial planets. And over the past for five years, this device has been collecting data. For this specific discovery, we look at how it's been recording the faint seismic pings from Mars quakes, the Martian equivalent of an earthquake, in case that wasn't obvious. And so far, InSight has detected over 1,300 of these Mars quakes. The general historic consensus is that Mars has been active in the past, many millions of years ago. It is thought that most volcanism on Mars occurred between 3 billion and 4 billion years ago, leaving behind giant monuments such as Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in the solar system. At 16 miles high, Olympus Mons is about three times as tall as Mount Everest, 
Everest, Earth's highest mountain. Olympus Mons is found in the Tharsis Montes region near the Martian equator and is one of a dozen large volcanoes, many of which are orders of magnitude taller, so 10 times or 100 times taller than the ones we have on Earth. To give you an idea, the tallest of them towers 16 miles above the surrounding plains and stretches across 374 miles. So for a volcano, they're pretty flat relative to the ones we know on Earth, as in large, but like, uh, large, but thick relative to their tallness. Height, tallness, I get really stressed when thinking about which word is the correct one to use, because obviously they mean different things. Anyway, it stretches across 374 miles, which is roughly the size of the state of Arizona. So pretty large. In comparison, Hawaii's Mauna Loa, the tallest volcano on Earth, rises 3.6 miles above the seafloor. The volume contained by Olympus Mons is about 100 times that of this Hawaii volcano, and the whole Hawaiian island chain that houses the earthly volcano could fit inside the Martian counterpart. Just as a little aside, because it's something that I thought, a question I had while doing this research, why are some of the volcanoes on Mars so much larger than the ones on Earth? It actually comes down to the surface gravity of the red planet, it's a lot lower than it is on Earth combined with higher eruption rates. And so what scientists think happen is the lava on Mars can kind of pile up higher because of this. There are also a few other reasons to do with tectonic plates, how they move, how they look, what they're up to, but that's for another video. So in the paper published last week, Simon Stalher at ETH Zurich in Switzerland and his colleagues described how they used data from NASA's InSight lander mission to uncover a likely magma deposit near Cerberus Fossae, which is a series of semi-parallel fissures formed by faults which pulled the crust apart crossed, pulled the crust apart in the Cerberus region. The Cerberus region is a large dark spot located on Mars, you may have heard of it. It's named after the mythical dog Cerberus, which guarded the gates of hell, I believe. Anyway, using this data from InSight, Stalher and colleagues studied a cluster of more than 20 seismic events on Mars and in this Cerberus fossae region. The InSight mission has measured the seismicity of Mars since February 2019 and has enabled the investigation of tectonics on the surface of another planet for the first time. Its data set shows that most of the widely distributed surface faults are not seismically active and that seismicity is mostly originating from a single population of tectonic structures, the Cerberus fossae. So in the paper, they really highlight that it's it's only going on in this region, but it is going on. The InSight data is great for this because it allows for the study of seismic waves that travel across the planet's surface and from deep within its interior. And you can tell a lot by investigating the speed and frequency of these waves. But as with all noisy data, power is in numbers and you need a lot of data points to see through the noise and start to spot patterns. Now we have enough data to see certain statistical patterns and we are able to locate quakes happening on Mars, says Stalher. Oh, okay. Both of my have gone numb at the same time, which is fun. They're not kind of deathly numb yet, so I'm just gonna waggle them around and hope for the best. The researchers suspected that magma was likely to be present under the region's surface when they analyzed the spectral characteristics of the waves. The low frequencies they saw are usually associated with volcanic settings. The researchers cross-checked these findings with satellite images that show dark deposits of dust surrounding that region, suggesting recent volcanic activity. By recent, I mean in the past 50,000 years or so. Now, this is a question that I had when I was looking into it, but the definition of an active volcano does vary and it seems to rely on a number of factors, but most scientists consider a volcano active if it has erupted in the last 10,000 years. So maybe it's not extremely recent, 50,000 and 10,000 is a big difference, but it is in the right order of magnitude, so it's enough to cause a stir. New scientists spoke to Nick Teamby at the University of Bristol in the UK, and he said that many people mistakenly think of planets as bodies that remain unchanging over time. I think the most exciting thing is that there are these new features on the surface of Mars and they could still be active. Mars is still doing things, he said. And the excitement doesn't end there. When I started writing this video, it was a lot broader because Mars just has quite a lot going on, especially in recent years. It feels like with the data 
later from this InSight mission, there's been a bit of a renaissance in interest in Mars, although I guess you could argue that it never truly died down. Anyway, other recent data from InSights hints at the presence of a water table after two meteorites hit the surface in December 2021. These subsequent shockwaves were picked up by InSight and they were found to be moving faster than expected, hinting they came through a more dense material, hence water table suspicions. And this is the first time we've measured seismic waves moving across the surface of another planet. So it's a really, really big deal. So what does this mean to you? To me, it serves as a reminder, another reminder, that there's so little we know about the universe. But more than that, we consider the universe's mysteries to be hidden in the most distant galaxies, the oldest stars, and they definitely are, but discoveries like this are incredible reminders that our nearest neighbors are also largely unknown. Anyway, there is lots to say about Mars, but this stuff is so recent and so fresh and exciting, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments, as always, and give the video a like if you liked it. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.